So, in previous meetups, we have uh, talked about, we showed this video. Um, so, we were here, who was here last time? Lawrence and Jerry? I did. Who were here last time? There's that speaker on the ground. I don't know if it's hooked oh, up to that or something. Now we're talking. 
Here's how you can get the most out of your iPhone video camera. First things first, don't shoot vertical video. Why? Because we're living in a widescreen world, baby. Laptops, televisions, your Twitter feed, your website. So if you're planning on people viewing your video anywhere other than on your iPhone, shoot horizontally. Jeff has some pretty steady hands, and the iPhone is working really hard trying to smooth out his shot. But as you edit multiple tapes, slight movements from shooting handheld can be pretty distracting. So when you're shooting someone talking to the camera, use a tripod. See how much better this is than the tripod? Way more consistent. My favorite iPhone adapter is the Joby Grip Type. It can screw right onto the plate of the same tripod I used with my Canon 5D. When you're framing your shot, avoid the temptation to use the iPhone zoom. Since the lens isn't zooming optically, it's enlarging the picture digitally, which means Pixels! You don't, don't want to get closer up. Zoom like your grandpa did back in the day. Move your feet closer until you find the perfect shot. So the built-in camera flash on the new iPhone is not the worst thing in the world, but it's pretty harsh on the subject and will never compare to using some off-camera lights. There's obviously a ton of professional lights that you can buy, like this ring light, or these ice lights but you can hack together a decent lighting kit from Home Depot for under 100 bucks. The iPhone looks great in natural light, so if you can't get your hands on any studio lights, position yourself facing a window and use the sun. Now, the iPhone will automatically focus and expose your shot, but I recommend using the exposure focus lock when you're shooting one person talking to the camera like this. This will save the camera from constantly trying to focus and then refocus while you're delivering your lines. The general rule for good sounding audio is to get your microphone as close to your subject as possible. But you didn't think we were using the audio from the iPhone we were shooting with, did you? For this shot, we have another iPhone directly above my head recording a voice memo. Clap once at the beginning of each take so you have a reference point to sync the good sound from the voice memo with the bad sound from the video. Another option is to use this KV microphone adapter. Plug a powered mic into this bad boy, and it'll send the audio from the microphone directly into your iPhone. For this video, we're using the Sennheiser ME66 with the AA bag. The fixed lens on an iPhone will limit how wide of a shot you can get. So a great workaround for this issue is to pick up a clip-on lens adapter. To be honest, I only recommend using something like this auto clip when you need to get a wider shot. This is especially handy when you're shooting indoors or in small spaces. But now, let's talk about the best effect, and the only reason I paid for a new phone before I was due for an upgrade. <laughs> you can get some amazing shots with the iPhone in slow-mo, but make sure it's motivated and fits your story. A shot of someone skiing? Great in slow-mo. But a shot of someone typing on their computer, but not the best use of slow motion. I know there are video editing apps for the iPhone, but only use them when you don't have a computer available. So when you finish shooting, plug your phone into your computer and offload your footage. I use image capture to get the clips from my hard drive first, but you can also import directly into your editor files. If you've never edited video before, there has never been a better time to start. The iPhone camera, combined with just a touch of editing know-how, can unlock some serious potential. A whole video was shot on the iPhone. It's amazing. Cool. Um, so we took those two videos, and we were, we were preaching about it for a long time that we should do it, and we finally did. So uh, we bought all the stuff. And uh, today we're going to shoot a video um, just so you guys can see how it goes from start to finish and see how all the stuff came together. It really was, I think it was a little over 100 bucks, like 125 bucks all said and done. But it's a cool little, cool little uh, get up and then here I'll show you one of the finished products real quick. Does that include the mic? Yep. Wow. I'll show you.
doing well. So we've done it a couple times now. Um, so we're semi pros. We'll figure it out. So, so all of it, a lot of it was found on Amazon. Um, these two little light stands. I went to the local photography place for two of these night stands. They were or light stands. They were thirty bucks on Amazon. They were like sixty-five bucks each at the local store. So buy them on Amazon. Um, and then these lavalier mics, the lapel mics, they were astronomical. They were super 70, 80 bucks, something like that, for one. And I picked up five of them for six on here. Wow. <laughs> um, so that was awesome. Plus then, shipping? No. Yeah, no, it's free shipping with Prime, I think. And then this is a diffusion paper, which we found out after I paid the 12 bucks for it that we could get by without it because we could do something else. But, um, so anyways, so I got all the stuff over here. So we'll start setting it up. Andrew's my SEO guy that's been helping do these, so he's kind of a pro with me, learning how to make it all work. So we pick up these fancy dancy lights here, super high tech. You might recognize them from your garage near you. Um, so they did have the. They were a few bucks each. The, um, the sun look alike light bulb, right? The ones that have. Yeah. So they tell you in the. Actually, I should have right in his description here. Well, that's what he was saying, but I just wasn't sure whether that was true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so, and, uh, there it is. Think of all their stuff here, or the stuff they purchased, and the same in that other video. Oh, so he actually has a little yeah, shopping a list. list. That's got a list down there. Lighting kit. And literally, I pulled this up on my phone. Nice. Home Depot. Daylight color CFL. And they and the prices were almost exact, spot on for everything I bought. So this was really, really exactly how it was. Nine bucks each for these. They tell you which kind of bulbs to get, even. Uh, right. Well, that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. So you get the bulbs. You get these. These came finally. Um, Twenty bucks. These cool little lighting kits and stand right up. So, like I said, we're gonna do it sitting down, so you want them head height almost. Um, one over Andrew. This one so instead of just recommending you to, you're actually taking us through it. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it right now. So, oh, and to. The reason why, and the reason we've talked about this before, so how we're using this right now as far as SEO goes, more and more SEO is less about the tactics and more about just creating a lot of really good content. And so with our clients, we've been finding it's hard, it's hard to come up with content all the time, over and over and over again, week after week, um, month after month, year after, it gets, it gets hard. So what we found is we've got this new little strategy with these videos where we're gonna go once every eight weeks or so, we go and meet with them for about an hour. So these don't hang on very good by themselves, they fall over. That's why he buys these clips. So take these and clip them onto the stand right. so it pulls it more sturdy. Um, okay. So we're using videos to, um, mm -hmm. we sit down for about an hour, record the person talking, Andrew comes up with a list of questions, and then just kind of interviews them, try to get a minute long answer out of the person when they're talking. And then after that, we come back and we've got about eight videos usually out of a video shoot. We'll come back to the office, we'll crop them up once, once a week, we'll take the video, and we'll, uh, we'll take the video, split it up into smaller videos, and then we'll use that for blog posts, we'll use that for uh, infographics, we'll, use, we'll take that content from the video and use it for what a is, million other things. What is the editing software that you use? I'll show you. I, I just use iMovie. Super easy and straightforward. I don't want to see that. that. Uh, it could probably be included on new Max, but not possibly. It could be like 15 bucks. Uh, yeah. We do. We trickle them out once a week. We'll send out a new one. Um, so I got my little grip tight tripod mount. So most of the time we use one of the bigger mounts, uh, the bigger tripods. But for this, this one, 15 bucks. Off of Amazon. This has a camera and an extra uh, large uh, chip in it. Yeah. So I can use this. Yeah. It's believe me, not a Mac. Yeah. So. You know, yeah, so or you can get that on your computer. You can do whatever you want with it after that. Well, so, oh, okay. If you record with it, then you can. Well, so, editing is yeah. really essential. 
Amazon. Yeah, it's essential for sure.
to make sure the lights are correct. Um, so that's super bright. Yeah, it's got the back up some in here. Sorry, here. Okay. Got something on his forehead from. It's the projector. Uh, oh, that's right. That's messing up too here. <laughs> the projector light will turn it off. Or it's right. I see letters on your forehead. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> that's that's that white light. Slowly becoming a cult. <laughs> okay, so some of the other pieces. Uh, this lavalier mic. So the first mic we bought was the $80 mic, and it worked great. Uh, one of the videos we shot with, the audio was perfect. All we did is we used Andrew's phone, plug it into the headphone jack, and then uh, Andrew put this in his pocket, or the person getting recorded put it in his pocket. So I'll put it in my own. And it's easy enough to sync up to the fraction of a second. I'll show you. Yeah. It is a little tricky to, uh, it's tricky to come on. Come on. They come with a little clip. Uh, shoot it on my shirt right there. And took the rest of the part of my pocket. So this worked really good the first video. Second video, I had returned that $80 mic because these were on their way. And we didn't get here in time, so we went and picked up a little microphone that just came off the phone. And that was the quality. It wasn't work. It didn't work very good, so. Not everybody knows. Okay, so, so you have examples of this one functional? Yeah, I, I got So it's just on the voicemail app. It works great. Uh, just start recording. Hello, hello, you can see the audio is recording. Is there a way to increase the DB on it? Um, when you're in the editing, you can. Oh, you can. So just lock it, put it in my pocket, now it's recording. Um, actually, let me sit down one more time. Now that the projector's off, make sure the lights get one more time. So. <coughs> I think you probably want it in the same plane as the, um, yeah. So, you want it to kind of look as natural as possible. Um, on the face, not too hard, Peter. Um, that's good enough for this demo. Um, then, Andrew. Who's gonna come up with some questions on the fly right now? It's gonna sit to the side of me in this video. For at least in my opinion, stylistically, it looks a little better if you're doing an interview and you're not looking straight at the camera. So let's go ahead and jump over here. Um, so one more time, use it there. Yes, I'm gonna auto lock it. Here, I'm going to lock it on the space one more time. Touch and hold, it pops up, it says AEAF lock. So now it won't change focus, so we swap it. Um, so, now, get in front of them. You know, what Andrew's done, usually in advance to these shoots, is open up the topics to talk about, obviously. And they're all keyword and SEO related topics that are going to help them rank better. So he looks at competitors if they're doing videos, see what they're talking about, see what's popular in the market right now, see what services the person offers, and get them to talk about that. Our goal eventually is to just have videos all over these guys' websites because they get watched way more than content gets read. So, um, so we'll sit somebody where they're looking off to the side. Yeah, you can report it. Um, and looking at Andrew. And you talk slightly off camera, so it looks like it looks more natural in an interview setting. You make sure your head's not shiny like mine is right now, because um, that shows up really clearly. Are you looking good? <laughs> always, always. Check us. I got to. Um, is it recording? Yeah. So then, like I said in the video, we always start with a big, loud flap. And that picks up on the mic here, and it picks up on the mic there, and it makes editing the video way easier to sync up the audio. There's You'll see the audio I'll show you in a second. You'll see the spike on both videos and you just line them up one over, one over top of the other. That's good to try and just the lips. The audio is perfect usually by doing it that way. So I'll just do one question. I don't know. I'll talk for 30 seconds. See what I'd say. Now pretty much how we do this is we sit down with the person that's being interviewed and have a normal conversation basically. We sit down for about 50, 55 minutes just talking about what the person likes and masters, you know. So I want to know from you. Uh, content and SEO, how is that important for 2015? Uh, I think content and SEO is increasingly more and more important. Um, 
at the Google and Google Find, they are trying to demolish the search engine optimizer. And the way they're going to do that is by making content that much more important, high quality content. So everybody's going to be pushed towards videos, infographics, uh, guest posting, even though that's kind of dead art, um, but done tactfully and done the right way. That's a high quality content that can be used to their advantage. E Ebooks, um, videos, did I already say that? Just talk, any, any content creation you can come up with is going to overtake all the tricks and knickknacks and everything else that you can do for it, search and optimization. Those are still going to be important, so you have to have a good page structure and H2s and H1s and all that kind of stuff. But I think they'll take a second, uh, second, close second to all the high quality content related things. So it's very important for Google to recognize social signals, and video does that. Videos are more easily to go viral than a blog post nowadays. So I'm the advocate of social media being the next SEO in lots of re for lots of reasons. I mean, it's going to come from content creation, but Social media, as soon as Google can figure out how to really decide if you're a good person, which social media is the perfect grounds to do that on, then they're going to want to show you, what, show you more often. So make sure your social signals are all strong, that people are liking you and doing that stuff on, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, so Google Plus, and channel. all those. Um, then it'll go a long ways for your SEO efforts. What better way is there to educate yeah, we'll people about this? Yeah. Come to our meetups. <laughs> yeah, we have them every month. And we'll be here. Okay, so that's it. That's pretty much the extent of it. So then we'd stop it, and we'll actually, I'll pull it up on my phone. We'll do it. You're good. So, so you're good. Uh, you're good. So stop, stop that one. Stop that one. Okay, so we'll pull up the screen again. Shut down these lights. Side question. Yeah. <clears throat> so once you get the video produced, uploaded, do you do post it on your site first, and then go to YouTube like a week or two later, or just Post YouTube, then post your site, or I think how does that benefit? Put it on YouTube. <laughs> Put it on YouTube first most of the time, um, and then share it from the website. So upload to YouTube, optimize it, put your link in the top of the description, fill out content, add a transcript. I mean, that's a whole other meetup we've talked about. Um, but um, but um, once I get it all fine-tuned on YouTube, then I'll post it in a blog post, and that's what I'll share with everybody. So my website and your website should be your home base for pretty much everything you're doing. So as much as you can point people back to your website, the better. Because then instead of them seeing a related video from some of your competitors or something in the sidebar, you've got YouTube related videos turned off, and now they say, oh, what other things does this person do instead of what does their competitor do? So point them back to your website as much as possible. Okay. So let's see here. So the latest twist is that on Facebook, they don't want you sharing a link to your site or YouTube. Yeah. Right? If you upload your video natively, if I share a link to a YouTube video, I'll get 1,000 views, 5,000 views. I share one natively on Facebook, about 400,000. So it's dr they're dramatically favoring their own natively YouTube. uploaded. And they've changed a lot of their settings on their Facebook uploads. You can actually see views and everything else. They give you really robust analytics more so than they did just a couple months ago. So, yeah. Okay. For sure. Yeah. We needed something where we were testing it and it just kind of like they got the weird returns on it. So we're trying to figure out how to make that. Because it's, it's really artificially giving more weight to something that's uploaded to Facebook because they won't compete with YouTube. So. Yeah. It's true. So they don't use Google Plus, Google. Yeah. What's that? They don't use Google Plus, they Google. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> and YouTube's their, their system, so they totally do it. Alright, so let's mirror these real quick. Okay, now I can actually drive. Let's see my screen. So, I'm going to use the magic of the Mac. And Drop this video over to me. In the editing of the videos on YouTube, you guys play with like putting uh, linked buttons over the videos and stuff like that. And do you see how are those links favored or weighted? Um, I don't think necessarily they're weighted differently, but they are helpful. People click on them lots of times, so they get they get exposure for you, additional exposure. So that's definitely not a bad idea. So on Facebook, the trick is, if you're viewing it on a desktop, 
they've got to watch the whole video before they see the call to action. But on mobile, the call to action is on the video. So depending on how they're viewing it, the call to action may not show up until the end. I think it makes a huge difference if you're trying to get a yeah. So, so, sorry. So if you view a, the same video yeah. on mobile, the Facebook call to action will actually be on the video the whole time. So you can interrupt the video to do your transaction, presumably with your website, right? To do the, to the conversion. If you're looking at it on a desktop, the call to action doesn't show up at any point during the video until you watch the whole thing. Or maybe 30 seconds in or a minute in or whatever it is. So it's, it's just an interesting difference. And a lot of people are obviously in our in our situation we're getting like sixty percent of our views and traffic from mobile, so it's actually a more effective tool to get traffic to your site because they're they're looking at that call to action the whole time they're watching it. Mm -hmm. Great Scott. I didn't know that, <laughs> I didn't know that bill is reach, but that's good. So I airdropped those over to me. They're gonna be right here, this movie and this audio file, so I'm going to import both of those real quick, because iMovie, it's got to be one of the easiest video editing softwares I've ever used. Um, and you said there is a charge for that, or? Let's look it up. I want that right now. Oh, good save. Nice. Sorry, Jerry's the rescue. <laughs> almost ruined my $10 life. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. $3 bulb. Yeah, yeah, true that. Okay, so. <laughs> Matrix. There's one other piece to this. Um, which is the audio. So if you're Audio Jungle, it's super cool. Little uh, audio file. Let's find some in there. Business audio. You can play them in line here. Audio Jungle. I'm gonna Be 
should have a decibel over the over the medium. I think 
content as Halo is increasingly more and more important. Adds a little movement to it, but it's not as nice. Adds a little to demolish the search engine optimizer. What is that called? Ken Burns? Ken Burns. Clever. The opposite way now. <laughs> I'm going to add the social media to oh, so, that's for and content creation, but social media, we'll figure out how to move inside the person. Yeah, I'm going to add that to the Yeah, I'm going to add that to the Transition to that, we'll cross dissolve it, and then we'll fade 
y to the very end. And we'll make this a little bit longer than one second. So this is on purpose. This screen, super important for SEO. So Google can read text in, in images they try, or in videos they try to. So this is actually a reference for your local SEO efforts. You want to have your address and your, and your URL in the video, actually in the video. Um, that goes a long ways. So, so now it looks like this. Come to our meetups. We have them every month, and we'll be here. Okay. How did you put that in there again? Titles, same way you did in the beginning. The, which part? The page. This thing? Yeah. It's just an image. So I made a JPEG previously, and then you just throw it in there. And then I just imported it and dragged it off the right in there. It's just a JPEG image. You can put you know, any JPEGs in the video. Okay. Um, cool, so start to finish, there's that. Got my name, got my intro, got my name and address at the end. Last piece of that audio. So if we go oh, back. Did we just see, see the transition to the neon thing? You, you yeah, it's a cross is all. And I'll be here. Yeah. Hi. I just made it and then this does a little. Oh, I see. The JPEGs automatically throw that Ken Burns effect. You can see it zooming in slowly. I didn't even have to put it on that. And then it faded away. And so it's okay. Are we tracking still? So with audio, you gotta get a little fancy. Um, if we turn this on. So that's too loud, obviously. There's a setting up here that will turn down the volume of the other clips for you automatically when it comes on. So we'll set that. We want to be very quiet when I'm talking. So now, it'll still be loud at the beginning. Probably too loud. Yeah, because it was actually turning me up up there over DB. Okay. So much funner now. Just makes you want to listen to it over and over again. I probably split that up in three videos. 
videos. Every time Andrew talks, I usually drop out the question and replace it with the question on the screen. Yeah. So, yep. Google reads it. Google reads the yeah. questions as well. Yes. Yeah. 
Rhino brand back in 2011. So the Upland was transferred from Google. I mean, Upland was transferred. Uh, all you do is you put it in a text file. So I'll send it. We started the Neon brand. Back up. We've talked about Fiber before. If you haven't heard Fiber, they're awesome. So transcription. Oh, I don't know if I transcription for up to whatever for $5. Um, you gotta find good ones. Sometimes they don't even speak English, so it's not good at all. <laughs> but usually, you can find somebody good. Eight minutes of audio for five bucks. So if you've got one of these guys to listen to your video, they get the transcript. You put it in a .txt file, like a text file. It's as basic as text can come. When you go to captions here, all you do is you add the captions. File and it'll actually take care of syncing it up. YouTube will put the audio together with the words. So you put your text file with all your different text in it and it'll match it up. I think it's pretty close. You can, you can edit it after the fact, but it's pretty much spot on. See what your captions look like. What's the advantage of having the caption? It makes all those beautiful words readable by Google. So they can now, they can hear them too, but now it's just one more. One more way to tell them exactly what you're saying. They do the automatic translation. Or they do and they watch have the caption. No, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I was just curious. Yeah, it yeah no, it's it's made for Google for sure. And, and the small boxes. You, you Google's not as good at transcribing. Audio. Yeah, they do okay. They do okay. Their default transcriptions are okay, but you know they'll miss crucial words that you want to make sure are one thing when they're guessing something else. So, so you would suggest using captions. Put your own captions, and it goes a long way. So it makes it a lot more optimized. So. Kenny, by the way, you mentioned Fiber. I've yeah. actually created a few videos where I took all my pieces, gave it to somebody really good on Fiber, and for five dollars they did up to a nine minute video. It's nuts. That's right. Check out our last. Oh, man. So, 